hey guys, here are a load of quick fire questions for homeostasis and response for AQA biology. If you want to get this, loads of other questions, subscribe to my channel and pop over to my video where you can get my free origin guide. Define homeostasis. Homeostasis is the maintenance of constant internal environments. What does the brain do in homeostasis? This is the control centre of everything. The nervous system does quite a lot in homeostasis. It controls heart rate, breathing, as well as the urinary system and the digestive system. What is the endocrine system? This is a collection of glands which release hormones, and hormones control um, a large number of things. They regulate metabolism, growth, development, tissue function, reproduction, sleep, and mood. The pituitary gland is located in the brain. The pancreas is behind the stomach. The thyroid gland is in your neck. The adrenal gland are by your kidneys. Your ovaries um, are halfway in between your belly button and hips. And that is in women only. Um, testes hang below the penis. And that is in men only. Blood glucose is monitored um, combination of the liver and insulin. And when blood glucose is too high, the liver converts it. To glucagon. glycogen, sorry, not glucagon, glycogen. What is the menstrual cycle? Um, this is um, happens each month in women. It's a build-up and release of blood in the uterus. What is ovulation? That is when an egg is released. Testosterone is a hormone predominantly found in men, responsible for hair production and muscle growth. Contraception is something that stops you getting pregnant. This rest of it is for the high tier only. When blood glucose is too low, the liver converts its stores of glycogen into glucose. A negative feedback loop is when the reaction causes a decrease in the reaction. FSH is follicle stimulating hormone. LH is luteinizing hormone. Estrogen is the hormone predominantly found in women responsible for the control of the menstrual cycle.
FSH is produced in the pituitary gland. It acts on the ovaries and causes an egg to mature. Luteinizing hormone is also produced in the pituitary gland. It acts on the osive ovaries, causing an egg to be released. Oestrogen is produced in the ovaries. It acts on the pituitary gland. and causes it to start the production of follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. IVF is in vitro fertilisation. This is to help couples who can't have a baby have a baby. I have a very long video about um, the process of IVF that I went through. Um, if you're interested in more details about this, you can go and watch this. Two positives about IVF are that you get a baby. They are very cute. And it can also be used for pre-implantation um, diagno pre diagnosis. If a couple has a genetic disease that needs to be screened for before the embryo gets transferred back in. Two negatives of IVF are that it's very expensive. There's no guarantee it's going to work and you have to take a large number of drugs which um, have a lot of short term and long term side effects. Thyroxine is a very important hormone. It is very important for control of the metabolic rate. It is produced by thyroid glands. And it acts um, a large number of places on the heart, digestive system, the brain, and muscles. Adrenaline is responsible for your fight or flight response. It's produced in the adrenal glands. And it acts on nearly every single organ in the body. In the brain we have the cerebral cortex. Cerebellum. And the medulla. Label these different parts of the eye. The white of the eye that goes all the way around is the sclera. At the back we have the retina. Going to the brain. The optic nerve. We have the ciliary muscles. Which are connected by the dispensary ligaments. the lens, the pupil, and the cornea. Short-sightedness is where you can't focus on distant objects. Where long sightedness is where you can't focus on near objects. Short sightedness can be corrected with diverging lens. 
Long-sightedness is with a converging lens. Osmosis is the movement of water. Through a partially permeable membrane. And that is from a high to a low water concentration. How does water leave the body? This can be sweat, tears, um, evaporation, lots of different ways. How does water get into the body? Drinking. If a cell loses too much water, um, especially a plant cell, it's going to lose its shape, it's going to become less rigid. If there is too much water, it might burst. The kidneys filter the blood. Treatment for kidney failure is dialysis or um, kidney transplant. Phototrophism is where plants grow towards light. Geotrophism or gravitrophism is where roots grow towards gravity. Gibberellins are plant hormones that regulate growth. ADH is antidiuretic hormone. And it's responsible or is part of the system that controls the level of water in the blood.